The controversy we'll be revisiting today is an unsettling incident YouTube would prefer we forget ever happened. Easily one of the most disturbing and consequential PR disasters in YouTube's history. Elsa Gate. This story was massive, and for good reason. Back in 2016, the lid was blown on a site-wide operation. A ring of channels had been making content targeting children that contained violence and highly suggestive sexual themes. Check this out, new at four o'clock. Sex, drugs, and scary videos on a popular children's app. Inappropriate videos have infiltrated YouTube kids, often showing popular children's characters in violent and even sexual scenarios. This salacious material deceptively found its way to the screens of kids, with creators using sneaky methods to get clicks. They used iconic kid-safe characters like Spider-Man, Dora the Explorer, and of course, Elsa to bait in young viewers. The discovery of this unsavory ring of creators generated disgust around the YouTube community, and it wouldn't be long before a moral panic ensued. Something had to be done about this. From traumatized children to outraged parents to multi-million dollar government fines being issued at YouTube, this is the dark legacy of ElsaGate. Today's video is sponsored by Keeps, and to begin the ad, let's take a look at my hair from videos back in 2020. Yeah, I was losing hair back in the day and losing it fast. I didn't feel like going bald, so I started getting hair loss prevention treatments through Keeps. And the results have been pretty insane. Here's me about six months after starting Keeps, a year after starting, and then there's me now. Uh, I think in comparison, my hair looks quite a bit fuller and better than it did back in the day. Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA-approved hair loss products at a can't-be price. And best of all, you skip the trip to the doctor's office and pharmacy. Keeps will set you up with a prescribing doctor online and ship your prescription right to your front door. And in four to six weeks, you should start seeing results. Look, I stand by Keeps. This stuff works. And if you're a guy that has some anxiety about hair loss, there's no better time than now to start Keeps. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to www.keeps.com wavy to get 50% off your first three months of treatment. To begin the Elsa Gate story, let's take a brief look at the history of children's content on YouTube. The first large kids' channels were your trusted classics that had migrated over from television. We're talking Sesame Street, VeggieTales, Thomas the Tank Engine, etc. But after a while, you started getting enterprising mom and pop operations entering the YouTube ad revenue gold rush. The output of these smaller mom and pop independently ran channels pretty much included these amateur kids' animations with nursery rhymes that were in the public domain. But in the kids' content hustle on YouTube, the mom and pop operations were getting outclassed by the big boys, by the Sesame Streets on the block. I mean, what kind of kid wants to watch some generic soulless looking stock image ass character when they can watch the top shelf stuff like Peppa Pig? So in order to compete, the smaller independent kids channels got a little bit creative. In the early 2010s, you started seeing smaller creators taking great liberty with the intellectual property of others, using well-known and iconic kids characters in their own creations. This included using live actors wearing popular kids character costumes and also computer generated animation that sort of looked like some Chinese bootleg of a main franchise character. Now, while you're certainly getting a little risque with this level of copyright swashbuckling, one could argue that it was protected under fair use or fair dealings. Whatever the case, using these copyrighted kids' characters, it was a cheap and effective tactic in bringing in new viewers. A lot of these small mom and pop channels blew up and weren't small anymore. An entire industry was forming on YouTube, an unregulated wild west of children's content, each channel participating in a sort of arms race battling competitors for views and ad revenue. And as years would pass and this kid's content was allowed to mutate further, we'll come to find that copyright abuse was the least problematic thing going on in this space of content creation. Some folks were willing to go to disturbing lengths in order to get the eyes of children on their videos. In 2016, an article was published by The Guardian shining light on a phenomena of rapidly growing kids' channels that were including adult themes in their content and racking up millions of views while doing so all while perfectly being accessible within the walled garden of the YouTube Kids app. 
One such channel highlighted by The Guardian was called Webs and Tiaras. This channel was notorious for featuring the various antics of a group of unknown actors dressed as Spider-Man and Elsa. We've got a Frozen movie. Superheroes, it's cool, it's fun, Kid, the kids out there are having fun. 115 million views in one month. Very suspicious stuff. Suspiciously going from zero subscribers to a million in a matter of months, this channel employed thumbnails often depicting characters getting impregnated and being injected with needles amongst other tasteless clickbait. And at least one episode published by this kid's channel showcases an impregnated Spider-Man getting an ultrasound and like being prepared for childbirth. Yeah, so this is just like totally something you would want your five-year-old kid to sit down and binge hours of, right? Other channels at the time that were blurring the lines of kid and adult content with this Spider-Man and Elsa style material included Toy Monster, The Superhero's Life, and The Kids Club. While indeed very weird, pregnant Spider-Man wasn't creating a moral panic within the YouTube community just yet. However, people did start to take note, and the massive growth of this style of content did indeed spark conversation within the community. As the YouTube algorithm continued to graciously reward this weird content with views and ad revenue, the nature of the content would only become more extreme and dubious over time. As the sexual themes and violence would only become more prevalent in these videos as a twisted way to keep the intrigue of kids. These channels played off of taboo topics that kids were naturally inclined to want to look into when they weren't really emotionally prepared to handle any of it. <laughs> What the fuck are you trying to convey? What do you want kids to take from this? And creators capitalized heavily mass producing these videos, each an explicit package wrapped in bright thumbnails with iconic characters that kids and parents alike trusted. And by 2017, things really started to get bad. The thumbnails were just getting worse and worse. Videos marketed to kids began to include scat content with children's characters engaging in sexual scat fetishes, scenes of impregnation, and other disturbing scenes of harm. And again, most of this stuff was accessible within the YouTube Kids app. YouTube didn't realize it at the time, but they had a powder keg on their hands, a powder keg that was about to blow. In May of 2017, an independent blogger known as Red Wiped and Blow publishes an article entitled Elsagate Pedogate, The Many Faces of YouTube. The subtext reads, this is by far the most dangerous issue I have come across to speak on. What I am about to reveal may put my family and myself in danger. The article was essentially a documentation compiling various examples of the aforementioned suggestive kids content in the previous segment with the author providing a variety of theories as to why this type of stuff was being created in the first place. Money was obviously an incentive, but the author of this goes on to theorize that these channels may be operated by a ring of pedophiles attempting to groom children into liking whatever is in the videos. Conspiracy theories aside though, this article is notable for being the first place on the internet where the word Elsagate was used. This was the coining of the phrase or nomenclature. From this point on, any sort of content that was actually adult and sexually themed masquerading as kids content was referred to as Elsagate content. People wanted answers. Who was behind this repulsive content and why was YouTube just sitting back and allowing it spread? Chatter speculating on Elsagate began on the newly created Elsagate subreddit. Folks shared many theories from pedo rings being responsible to algorithmic glitches, AI generated content, you name it. There was online activism taking place. People got their, you know, metaphorical pitchforks and torches and were really going up against this Elsagate phenomena. Some users of the Elsagate forum even reached out to advertisers whose ads played on Elsagate videos in an attempt to get brands to pull their marketing. The fight against Elsagate during the summer was mostly a fruitless endeavor, but that would change whenever the YouTube community was reached out to about these problems. For today's Friday show, I want to talk about a heavily requested and I think important story. It's around the situation that you may have heard of as Elsa Gate. Kids watching silly fun videos about minions, despicable me, and then this ridiculous insanity pops up for them. This is from Zin Zin Cartoon, titled Minions, Banana, Baby Drinks, Piss Water. Funny story, full episodes. Finger Family Song Nursery. In the fall of 2017, large voices within the YouTube community began talking about Elsa Gate. And before you knew it, Elsa Gate was a hot button issue that the entire internet was laser focused on solving. 
these cartoon characters get together and they become like sexualized and they drink sometimes and the babies keep getting their heads busted open. Beep Beep TV. This is when shit gets real. As you can see, Best Elsa and Peter misunderstanding each shit in the toilet. Finger family song nursery rhymes in Ria. They actually eat shit from a fucking toilet. The thumbnail doesn't even try to conceal this shit. If you thought that was bad, let me show you this. Elsa forced slavery. Hit enter on that. For Elsa's forced slavery. This is by an official channel. This is where the panic really set in. On top of big YouTubers calling out the Elsa Gabe content, you also had mothers of children who were reaching out to the mainstream media explaining how their kids were traumatized from this sort of content. One such example is when a parent reached out to the New York Times and explained that their child was served a video of a claymation Spider-Man urinating on Elsa at a strip club. Interestingly, this article was the first instance where a representative from YouTube spoke on the issue. In the article, Malik Descart, YouTube's global head of family and learning content, said the inappropriate videos cited were, quote, the extreme needle in the haystack. Making the app family friendly is of the utmost importance to us. He continues, algorithms determine whether or not videos are appropriate for YouTube kids. The videos are continually monitored after that. But obviously, some unsavory stuff slipped through the cracks. And to that, he adds this. Quote, parents are in the driver's seat, unquote. Basically him saying that YouTube itself is not entirely responsible for what your kids are watching. Needless to say, Mr. Ducard's responses here didn't calm the panic at hand. But a policy change enacted at YouTube around this time was a step in the right direction. YouTube updated the monetization guidelines in a clear effort targeting Elsagate creators. Inappropriate use of family entertainment characters. This new guideline stated that any content depicting family-friendly characters in any sort of inappropriate way would not be eligible for monetization. When enforced properly, this guideline would dry up the revenue of an Elsagate channel that was targeted, and it would remove the monetary and incentive for new would-be Elsa Gabe creators from getting on the platform. But note I said, when properly enforced. Bots were running the show here and you had tons of people slipping through the cracks. This wasn't cutting it. The Elsa Gate industrial complex was still running on all cylinders by the holiday season of 2017. And from the public's perspective, YouTube just simply wasn't doing enough. The situation had turned into a PR disaster for the company. Brands like eBay, Adidas, Amazon, and others had announced they were pulling holiday ads from the platform, and trust in the YouTube Kids app was at an all-time low. If they wanted to turn this around, YouTube had to make it unmistakably clear that they were taking this seriously. And well, finally, on November 28th of 2017, YouTube finally went scorched earth on this type of content. On this day, YouTube would announce one of the biggest TOS crackdowns the site had ever seen. They announced the termination of over 250 Elsagate channels, the removal of 150,000 offending videos, and the shadow banning of an additional 625,000 videos. Additionally, they revealed that they now had an army of 10,000 human reviewers responsible for auditing videos. The gauntlet had truly been cast. Hundreds of Elsa Gate channels, many of them with hundreds of millions of views, dusted in an instant by a Susan Wojcicki Thanos snap. And with that, Elsa Gate was over. Well, sort of not really. The changes made to YouTube's algorithm during the nuking of Elsa Gate prevented this type of content from ever really having a large-scale presence on YouTube again. Some of it does slip through the cracks even to this day, but Elsa Gate content is no longer a money-making industry on YouTube. And there have been additional measures that make it even more impossible for Elsagate creators. You may remember in the wake of Elsagate, YouTube was issued a massive $170 million fine by the FTC under grounds of it violating COPA. According to the FTC, YouTube had been illegally collecting and tracking viewing history of minors in order to facilitate targeted advertising. You may remember that in a rushed effort to become COPA compliant, YouTube was essentially forced to demonetize all kids' channels and disable their comment sections in a widely detested update in late 2019. Most of this was done by bots and many channels that didn't even make kids' content were wrongly affected. Gaming content is not safe. A lot of other content that I didn't even consider is in major trouble with this. Um, anything with cartoons? Anything with animation? 
Um, even the YouTube bot went around and flagged a majority of things that just had the word animation or animated. YouTube's overhaul to become COPA compliant was one of the most botched guideline rollouts in the history of the site. But that's a drama story for another day. What I'm getting at here by mentioning COPA though is that while it's never been explicitly stated by the FTC or YouTube that Elsagate was a cause for them getting looked into by the FTC, I would imagine Elsagate was a major contributing factor in regard to the FTC cracking down on YouTube's child safety compliance, plain and simple. YouTube itself has PTSD regarding their infamous child safety catastrophe and the company's trauma is reflected in the site's interface. Nowadays, if you ever upload a video, you're asked numerous times if it has anything to do with kids or if kids are featured in it. And if you go to any old school viral video featuring a kid, you'll find that some YouTube bot has forcefully disabled the comment section. They don't take any chances when it comes to kids' content anymore, even to the point where it gets ridiculous. This is the legacy of Elsagate, for better or for worse. Easily one of the most bizarre and consequential controversies in YouTube history, that was the story of Elsagate. Let me know what you guys thought about this video down below in the comments section and let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons, I appreciate you guys, wavy web surf out, peace.